there was a bushel full of revelations about former President Donald Trump's chaotic behavior on January 6th. In a surprise hearing Tuesday, the committee investigating the insurrection heard from Cassidy Hutchison. She served as an aide to former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. In Hutchison's testimony, she described how White House staff desperately tried to get Trump to stop his supporters as they rioted. Scott McFarlane reports. The committee and this 26-year-old former aide to a former White House chief of staff painted a powerful picture today, beginning with the Trump White House ignoring warnings of looming violence at the Capitol and ending with the chief of staff seeking a presidential pardon. When the day began, Cassidy Hutchinson was a name and face unknown to most Americans. By the end of the day, she'd made history, including her description of an altercation in the presidential limo when his chief Secret Service agent, Bobby Engel, refused to bring then-President Donald Trump to the U.S. Capitol, to which he just directed the crowd on January 6th. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Engel. In the early hours that day, Hutchinson said Trump was warned of people carrying weapons, including guns, descending on key landmarks in D.C. But that Trump sought to have the metal detectors removed, concerned they'd reduce the size of his White House ellipse crowd. Take the effing mags away. They're not here to hurt me. Let them in. Let my people in. They can march to the Capitol after the rally's over. President Trump was aware that a number of the individuals in the crowd had weapons and were wearing body armor. And here's what President Trump instructed the crowd to do. We're going to walk down, and I'll be there with you. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. As rioters began their attack, the president wouldn't budge. Hutchinson said she asked her boss, Trump Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, to intervene. So the rioters are getting really close. Have you talked to the president? He said, no, he wants to be alone right now. She testified Meadows, White House counsel Pat Cipollone, and Trump all knew of the chance of hang Mike Pence echoing through the mob. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. Rioters chanted, hang Mike Pence. The president of the United States, Donald Trump, said that, quote, Mike deserves it. The committee cited Nora's interview with the House Republican leader, who urged the president to intervene. As Nora O'Donnell noted during an interview with House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. Leader McCarthy, the president of the United States has a briefing room, steps from the Oval Office. Why hasn't he walked down and said that? Hutchinson described her disappointment with the president's 2.24 p.m. tweet. As attackers poured onto the grounds, he wrote, Mike Hutchinson, Pence lacked courage. As an American, I was disgusted. It was unpatriotic. It was un-American. We were watching the Capitol building get defaced over a lie. And Scott joins me now with more from Capitol Hill. Scott, I want to start with uh, perhaps the, the most dramatic claim Hutchinson made, uh, which was about uh, this the president in the beast, the, the presidential limousine, uh, reaching for the wheel and then, and then perhaps lunging at his lead Secret Service agent. I understand we have some new reporting on that from the Secret Service. Yeah, John, first of all, a Secret Service statement says they will respond to this committee if they've been cooperating since the outset of the committee's investigation. But a source close to the Secret Service tells our colleague Nicole Skanga that the lead agent and the limousine driver will testify under oath that neither man was attacked and that Mr. Trump never lunged for the stealing, steering wheel of the Beast. And the Beast is the name of the presidential limousine in the motorcade. So we're already getting some response from the Secret Service and the source close to the Secret Service. But as the hearing was ongoing, we were getting responses from Donald Trump as well on his social platform, saying that Hutchinson's story was a, quote, fake story. And Johnny says he hardly knew her. 
And yet Hutchinson was a is a different kind of witness than the other witnesses we've had so far in in these hearings. What made her testimony uh, different and also her vantage point different than than people we've heard from before? Well, it stands out for several reasons, not the least of which is, John, she was there as a singular witness and it was a hearing that revolved around her and her story. There were other hearings where the witnesses were playing a role in a larger narrative, almost filling gaps that the committee had formed. This was a hearing about Cassidy Hutchinson's story, her account of what happened that day and her account of what did not happen that day at the White House. But also, she was right where this committee wants to be, inside the Trump inner circle. This committee has gone to great lengths to secure testimony and phone records from Mark Meadows, and it has not succeeded. It got what might be the next best thing, his top aide, his close aide, Cassidy Hutchinson to say what Meadows was doing and again what Meadows was not doing. And that's right. And as the Hutchinson uh, testimony was kind of the curtain was coming down, uh, Congresswoman Cheney kind of slipped in a, a last minute shocker uh, asking Hutchinson about both Rudy Giuliani and Mark Meadows seeking presidential pardons related to the events surrounding J January 6th. So, what does that tell us? That really punctuated this hearing that. There were pardon requests from the chief of staff to the president for the president and from legal advisor, Trump advisor Rudy Giuliani. And it just lands with me that the number of people seeking pardons, according to this committee, just keeps rising. We heard about it with John Eastman, that legal advisor from California, multiple members of Congress. And what also came up at this hearing, it might go unnoticed otherwise, is that according to Hutchinson, Donald Trump was talking about blanket pardons, perhaps, for the January 6th rioters, an idea he rekindled yeah. a few weeks ago during a political speech if he were to retake office in 2025. And, if, and of course, Hutchinson has been providing testimony, not just today, but in previous hearings, that some of the people asking for pardons knew that what they were doing at the time, or they'd been advised what they were doing at the time, uh, was not legal. Let me ask you another late-breaking um, item that uh, Congresswoman Cheney slipped in, which was she talked about possible witness tampering. Now, uh, from those who are in Trump's inner circle putting pressure on people that are speaking to the committee, has the committee said anything about this? And um, what about other, you know, from the Trump team uh, or anyone else about that charge? Well, they didn't name names. They actually omitted the names of the people they seem to be accusing of possible witness tampering, of trying to get to the witnesses who were speaking with the January 6th committee. We'll see if they reveal those names at a future hearing. But I'll note, this is a committee that has spoken to 1,000-plus people. The number of people who may have seen some interference or experienced some interference could be quite high based on the fact that the number of witnesses is quite high. And finally, Scott, give us a preview of what's coming uh, when things start back up in July. Well, the committee had told us this weekend they were going dark for a couple of weeks. They didn't really stick to that, John. So we'll see if they stick to it now and if they continue um, their initial plan to go dark until mid-July. We know they have teams that have been following the money trails. We've heard only a bit about that. They have a team, the blue team, following issues with police planning and with security responses and military responses. Haven't heard much about that. And we know they have a red team tracking the far right groups, the conspirators, the crowd on the ground here that day. We've heard quite a bit about that, but the committee has foreshadowed there's more to come. More wood to chop on this one. Scott McFarland, thanks.